Super Mario Maker 2 is an amazing sequel to the original on the Wii U. It added so many brand new features that will help create so many more levels. Every single new item can be used in such creative ways, however, which are the best? Well today, I narrowed it down to my top 10 favorite new items and features in Mario Maker 2. Now as a quick warning, this will only cover stuff for building levels, so this won't be including stuff like multiplayer versus or endless mode. Just the pure building features. So without much further ado, let's jump right into my top 10. But first, I really want to quickly give an honorable mention to the view mode. I didn't think it would fit with my other choices since it's kind of more of a mode instead of a brand new feature, but it's been very helpful so far so I thought I would give it an honorable mention. Also, spoilers for story mode ahead for some of the items. Let's jump into it. Now personally, I absolutely love to put secrets in my levels because I always like it when games include them. The big coin is pretty much perfect for this. I'm really fine with there being no star coins, as the big coins work perfectly as rewards. I always have ton of the big coins in my levels in hard to reach spots or hard to find spots. There are always something fun to include in a level, and I think it's made my level so far more packed with content. My favorite game is obviously Mario Odyssey, and one of my favorite parts about the game is how they reward exploration. Specifically these two piles of coins in the Sand Kingdom, as you would normally think Nintendo wouldn't place something there, in fact you would probably think Nintendo wouldn't even let you go up there. But since they put it there, it just makes me really happy. But that's spoilers for a different video I'm working on, let's continue talking about Super Mario Maker 2. The big coins are great, just make sure not to overuse them as they can take away from the rewarding feeling. The Super Hammer is the first of the three brand new power-ups to appear in this list. Oh, spoilers, the other power-ups are here as well. But anyways, out of the three, this was actually created for Super Mario Maker 2 and doesn't have an actual origin. With this power-up, you are able to use the hammer to kill enemies, even enemies like Meowser, break blocks, and even activate POWs. You are also able to use the power-up to summon up to five crates that Mario can stand on. This is a pretty unique power-up and is definitely a nice addition. So why did I put it below the other ones, you may ask? Well, that's because I think it's harder to base a level around this power-up, as their crates can be used to easily cheese some levels. It's also exclusive to 3D World, and while yes, all new power-ups are theme exclusive, I feel like this one in particular would have definitely been able to go into other themes, as pixel art already exists for Builder Mario and Mario 1, and since Builder Mario is the icon of Mario Maker, it would just make sense to be on all themes. Also, a lot of the time I see this, it's unfortunately just to mine a bunch of iron blocks to get to the end, instead of being used in creative ways. Either way, a really great addition, as more power-ups are always welcome. The Super Ball Flower was a really fun surprise to see in the game. It was something I did want to see, and let's just say it did not disappoint. It acts very differently from the Fire Flower with it bouncing off the walls and ceiling, and it can also collect coins. It also plays the Mario Land Overworld theme, which is a nice touch. The only real things that are negative about this power-up is that only one ball can be on screen at a time, and it's exclusive to the original Mario Brothers. Other than that, it's a pretty solid addition, and I've seen some pretty creative levels using it. So out of the three power-ups, the Cat Bell is my personal favorite. While it's exclusive to 3D World, it makes complete sense seeing as it originated in that game and it's its main power-up. It has a ton of functionality like claw swiping, diving, and even climbing up walls and semi-solids. I've seen so many creative levels based around these mechanics, and since it's the main power-up, it's also well used in traditional levels, which is always nice to see. I think out of the three power-ups added to this game, this one has the most functionality and the most possibilities. I've made a level centered around the cat suit and its many different uses. At the end, I have a boss fight where Mario has to climb a semi-solid, which is personally my favorite part, and one of my favorite things I put in one of my levels. But yeah, this power-up is great for puzzle, traditional, or really any type of level, so for its versatility, it gets the number 7 spot. Okay, so this might be a bit controversial to have this high on the list, but I really, really like the new Squirrel Stop. So many levels of mine in Mario Maker 1 looked so ugly without this, but now this feature makes my levels look so much better. I've used this in every single one of my levels so far, as it's super useful. It's also pretty cool that hard blocks can block the screen, and then the screen can scroll after they get destroyed. This feature is really useful for levels with any sort of room in them. My only two complaints is that it doesn't work for vertical scrolling. If this did work, this would also be very helpful, but this doesn't come up as much as horizontal, so I'm okay with this. 
and it also sometimes is really finicky to have it work, but once you get it, it's not that bad. But yeah, this is an amazing addition, and one I didn't expect, but I'm super glad it's here. Now just a heads up, the number 5, 4, and 3 spots are pretty much just all tied, because I can kind of switch these around, and yeah, I like these all three equally pretty much. But anyways, the on-off blocks are extremely useful for so many things. Stuff like platforming, complex contraptions, boss fights, and so much more. These switches and blocks are so useful for so many different scenarios. These allow for so many more possibilities that would have been impossible or close to it without them. These blocks are so useful and I've used them in a lot of my levels. Really there are thousands of different uses for these and we've only just scratched the surface so far. I can't wait for more amazing discoveries with these blocks. But not only are there dotted line blocks, but they can also be used with tracks, conveyors, and spike blocks, which also was something I did not expect. With all of these uses for these on-off blocks, it's hard to see how they couldn't be in the top 5. The only negative I could say is that sometimes people make annoying levels like this, but that's really the only negative I can think of. Mario Maker 1 was in desperate need of more bosses, but it never got any more. However, Boom Boom was added in Mario Maker 2, and in my opinion, is way more useful than Bowser and Bowser Jr. His attacks are a lot easier to predict and are a lot less chaotic, which means he can be used in much more situations. This also makes him useful for custom boss fights, which is why I use him so much in my boss fight video. He also acts a slight bit differently in each theme, adding a bit more variety. Boom Boom is just a very useful new addition, and I'm happy they added one more boss. We can always hope for more, but I think we have enough as is. Okay everyone, I made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgement. I was originally not someone who was begging for them, and I thought they wouldn't add much. But I was wrong, as slopes are absolutely amazing. Looking back at some of the Mario Maker 1 levels, while some did look nice, they really needed slopes, and man did Nintendo deliver with two different types of slopes. These go such a long way to making levels look so much nicer. Not only that, but the slopes also make each level feel more like a Mario level. Also, a really neat thing you can do is that if you combine the two slope types, they look really nice. They look kinda curved. I use slopes all the times in all of my levels, as they just make it look so much better. One of my levels, the Ice Cavern, uses slopes to give it more of a cave feeling on the floor and on the roof. Seriously, slopes are absolutely amazing, and I can't imagine how that level would have looked I just mentioned without them. If you don't use slopes, you really should, as they will make your levels so much better. It makes complete sense to me as why they were so heavily requested, and why they were the first thing shown off. I always like it when levels look nice, so these are pretty amazing. But I think I've gushed about these enough, Let's jump into my final two picks. Okay, so here we are, the biggest new addition to Mario Maker 2, being the brand new 3D World theme. I love that they added this despite it being a 3D game. They gave 3D World its own set of enemies as well, which really makes it feel like you're building a 3D World level. I have so much fun playing all the different types of levels in this theme, as it's by far the most different from the other four themes, hence why it's in its own section. The other new additions like the blinking blocks, explanation mark blocks, and clear pipes each do a great job of making this theme more unique. Mario also has a ton of different moveset options in this theme, which means you can create a bunch of levels centered around each of these. My favorite is the spin jump, which gives Mario a really high jump. This theme even has new power-ups like the hammer, bell, and even a car, which wasn't even in 3D World. Pom Pom also makes an appearance, and while she is a bit too random, she's still a nice addition. But with all that being said, why is this only number 2? While the point of this theme is to be unique, it's missing a lot of important features like enemy stacking, tracks, and one-ways, which makes it a bit risky to build in, especially considering when you switch between the themes, it resets. Sure, it's okay to be missing some things, but it seems like the 3D world loses more than it gains. If this theme had a bit more features that were in the other themes, then it would likely take the number one spot. But as it stands, it unfortunately has to be brought up, as it is a bit limited. Now before we get into the number one spot, I just want to give two quick honorable mentions. 
The first one is the icicle, as they're very helpful for making ice levels, and they're actually surprisingly I mean surprisingly useful for complex contraptions, as they work as global ground. The other are the new sound effects, which go a long way to add atmosphere to levels. I especially like the Mario 64, Galaxy, and Boss tracks that were added. But anyways, let's jump into the number one spot. And my number one spot, my favorite addition, has to go to the new level themes. In Mario Maker 1, we had a decent amount of themes, but they got repetitive after a while. However, Mario Maker 2 added in the desert, snow, sky, and jungle themes into the game. Each of them had their own unique look and music. Each one of them is different and fun to play in. In the jungle, you can also have water, which is a great addition. While these aren't credible by themselves, to be quite frank, this would have been perfect if they just had 10 themes, but Nintendo decided to go even further and add nighttime themes for all of the new and older ones. Each one of the nighttime themes have their own gimmick as well, with the water being turned to poison in the jungle or low gravity in the sky. This will last us a long time and we'll make sure we will never get bored, as there will be way too many theme and game theme combinations. Also, these new themes will allow us to actually make full-length Mario games with different settings as that was always something that the original Mario Maker was missing. This game over doubles the amount of themes from Mario Maker 1, and I'm so incredibly happy because I personally can't see myself ever getting bored of the same background. Combining themes and game themes, there were 24 combinations in the original game, but now there are 90. But anyways, that's it for this video. What are your favorite features? Let me know in the comments. This video took me a really long time, so if you liked it, then please drop a like, because that would mean a lot. Pretty much every new item is great in their own way, and I'm pretty happy that every single new item was added into this game. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time. My Twitter link is in the description if you want to go check that out. See you guys next time. Bye.